Hi guys, this is Carrie Lopez, and I am going to be talking about differentiating some gram-positive cocci, and I am going to start with staff. Um, so let me get y'all screen shared. in the picture first. Flowcharts are a really amazing thing. They help you um, figure things out easier than it would be to just memorize every single aspect about every single um, microbe. Okay, let me fix it. Okay, I'm going to start with this flow chart, and um, so you've got your um, gram-positive cocci. If it's catalase positive, um, then you go to the coagulase testing, where if that's positive, it'll be staph aureus, or um, if coagulase negative, it'll be staph another staphylococcus species um, or micrococcus species. If you are catalase, um, find out your gram-positive cocci is catalase negative, um, then you check what kind of hemolysis it is and go from there. Um, if it's alpha hemolytic, then you do um, your optochin testing, and if it's sensitive, it's your strep pneumoniae, and um, if it's resistant, it's enterococcus or group B strep, um, but we are going to start off um, specifically with uh, staph, staph species, and then I'll do another one for strep. So staphylococcus or staph. I always remember grapes of staph. They are cocci in clusters and grapes. And gram positive. Um, for purple. There we go. And so we got our grapes of staff. Um, now to get it a little bit more specific, um, we're going to start with staph aureus. And I always put a plus plus next to it, and um, that signifies your catalase positive. And then your coagulase um, positive as well. And they, um, all your staph species are, um, are catalase positive, but uh, 
Staph aureus is the only coagulase positive one. And so I'm going to highlight this uh, for differential. So anything that's highlighted in yellow will be differential, um, meaning that you can separate Staph aureus from your other Staph species uh, by the coagulase test. So Staph aureus is positive, positive. There's uh, many common disease associations with staph. Um, Fern uncles is one. Or boils. And carbuncles. Blisters. We've got uh, paronchia, um, and that has to do with your nails, post-surgical wounds, infections um, regarding post-surgical wounds, and then bacteremia as well. And then um, for all these, I always remember that there's um, many positives associated with Staph aureus, so cat positive, coag positive, um, and then you also have many positive diseases. So um, not necessarily like positive to have, but um, more like many, many diseases. Um, for BAP or your blood, your blood auger plate, it's going to look creamy. Pale, yellow, opaque, or goldish. Mm -hmm. This is where Lab Mama comes from. Can you say hi? Say hi. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> my phone's in my room. Close the door. Yeah. Um, creamy, pale, yellow, opaque, or a goldish color um, with beta hemolysis. And then your um, DNA is going to match the BAP. It always changes it. I don't want can, I actually want CNA. And then you're gonna have no growth on the McConkie since a McConkie grows gram negative. And then um, your CNA will grow gram positive. And then blood on your plate grows a little bit of everything. And then it also, um, Staph aureus has growth at 7.5% um, in ACL. Shows growth at 7.5. Um, it has many different intoxications um, associated with its uh, more of its uh, how it's made and how it's virulent. So it can cause folded skin syndrome. Toxic shock syndrome. especially in women of um, menstrual age or childbearing age. Uh, food poisoning. And that's caused by an enterotoxin. Symptoms usually occur one to five hours after ingestion.
sometimes when it comes down to uh, micro questions about um, about like food poisoning and stuff like that. Hey, like this patient ate this a day ago or 24 hours ago, or, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, a day ago or a few hours ago um, can help you differentiate what is causing the um, the food poisoning. Sometimes it's helpful to know how far after ingestion that something will um, cause infections. And then um, I took a little quote from uh, from the Bottom Line Approach book. It's a really awesome way to, um, to get things down a little better. And so it says protein A is my main trait. And enterotoxin. And what you ate. And so that's referring to the um, protein A enterotoxin um, that causes food poisonings with Staph aureus. And then you can also remember your protein A. Protein A. Yeah. Aureus. So your A's go together. So fold that one. And fold the A there. Oops. Protein A goes with staph aureus. There are many exotoxins. As far as susceptibility goes, for Staph aureus, penicillin, um, is a general um, antimicrobial agent for Staph aureus. However, um, I'm sure everyone has heard of MRSA, and we'll talk about MRSA in just a second. So, um, positive, makes penicillin a good choice. And you can also remember what kind of pomolysis does it have? Does Staph aureus have? Your Staph aureus has beta hemolysis and is beta lactam positive. Then you have um, a special strain of, of Staph aureus and it's called MRSA and that's Menicillin or uh, methicillin resistant Staph aureus, and um, in which case you would use vancomycin instead. And then MRSA, a little note about MRSA, is toxicin positive. And oxicillin resistant. And for resistant, I'll put an R in parentheses. Whereas if it was susceptible, I would put an S in parentheses. Now on to our next uh, species of staph. It's going to be staph epi or staph epidermidis. And if you think about what the epidermis is, then you will know where it is um, normal flora. So the epidermis is on your skin. So staph epi is normal skin flora. And with staph epi, I'm gonna put a positive for catalase positive and then a negative because your staph aureus is your um, coagulase positive staph. 
Um, however, most are all of the other ones are uh, coagulase negative. So we got positive for catalase. So cat positive, coag negative. And then your other important trait is um, novo biosin susceptible. Novo. And um, this is also differential. Your novo biosin, um, your coagulase negative differentiates staph epi from staph aureus, and then your novobiosin susceptibility separates it from other uh, coagulase negative staph. Like I said, it's normal skin flora. And it can be a contaminant. You know, think of a way that it can be a contaminant, knowing that it's normal skin flora. Be a contaminant from improper cleaning. So um, if the site's not cleaned properly before the venipuncture, then um, staph epi can infect and contaminate the specimen. As far as infections go, um, it's definitely increased in hospitals. So increase in hospital required. And then we've got endocarditis, prosthetic valves, um, HA is going to be for hospital acquired, so actually let me go put this one up here, increase in hospital acquired, so Mostly HA, which is hospital acquired. UTIs, so mostly for urinary tract infections. It's an opportunist. And so you'll see uh, you'll see Staph epi kind of take control in immunocompromised hosts or problems that way. Now, staph epi is sensitive to novo biosin. And I'm going to highlight it, that again and note down here that that is differential from other coagulates negative staph, like staph saprophagus. That's the most important thing to learn about micro, is not every single thing about every single, um, every single micro, but to know the differential aspects of them. And then for the BAP, or the blood auger plate, you're going to see small, white, circular, raised colonies with no hemolysis. And let me put a couple pictures in. So here's some staph epi.
and it's usually par pretty characteristic with those small white white uh, colonies. And then let me put one up here for staph aureus too. Sorry, we should have earlier. It's a really helpful aspect of micro too, is to get pictures of all of these things and um, put it on like your note card or however you're taking notes, add it in there. This is one thing to read it or to explain it in words, but it's another to see it on, um, on an actual plate. Need to zoom in on this one a little bit. So notice this one's more mucoid. And it's got that like creamy color. So you'll you'll notice when you see it, um, Staph aureus with that creamy color. And then your your um, Staph epi is more like whiter and has the um, smaller round circles. Next one we're going to talk about is Staph saprophyticus. And the most important thing to remember about Staph saprophyticus is that it um, is found with, um, often causes UTIs in young women. And so your Staph saprophyticus is going to be positive and then negative. We talked about the only one that's positive positive is our um, Staph aureus. So staph saprophyticus is cat catalase positive and then coagulase negative. Um, and so the differential, so cat positive, coagulase negative, and then um, you have other coagulase negative staph, right? So to tell the difference, um, you can run a novobiosin and it will be resistant. So our last one was um, Staph epi, and it's novobiosin susceptible compared to coagulase negative um, Staph, Staph saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant. And so again, that is differential. Staph saprophyticus um, is the common cause of UTIs in young women. And for your um, CNA and your blood auger plate, They will look pale yellow. And so here's your staph saprophyticus. So a quick overview again. Um, your grapes of staph are cocci and clusters. They are gram positive. Staph aureus is the only, they are all catalase positive. Um, however, staph aureus is the only one that is coagulase positive as well. So staph aureus, positive, positive. And then um, our staph epi and then our staph saprophyticus are um, catalase positive, but coagulase negative. So to tell the difference, um, I put positive positive down here and it should be positive negative, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so staph epi and staph saprophyticus, you can run the novobiosin susceptibility 
and Staph epi is susceptible, whereas Saprophyticus is resistant. And then your Staph Saprophyticus is a main cause of UTIs in young women. And I'm going to make some more about strep and enterococcus, and um, hopefully we'll keep going down the line as Micro keeps going. So check them out and subscribe.